Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We're going to take a look at January numbers and uh, show you what's going on, come to some conclusions. We can't really predict out more than two months, but uh, with some of the numbers that we're seeing now, it's pretty safe to say, okay, here's what's going to go on in February and March. A lot of the numbers that you're going to see coming out now are going to be history, November and December. For example, here's one from Case Schiller, and it says... The National House Price Index continued to decline to 7.7 year-over-year increase in November. So they're basically saying November was pretty slow, and that's that's kind of a no-brainer. It was. It was painfully slow. And you're familiar with this chart. It's the Cromford Market Index, and it's a measurement of uh, both supply and demand and kind of gives you a heads-up where the market is going and you can see back here in August that it was going down it was going down at a pretty good clip and certainly by September and October we saw our numbers plummet and uh, but then long around December down here we started climbing up and I was I was kind of skeptical of that I said well okay you know you've heard me say before you know two weeks does not make a trend and I said, I'm going to have to keep an eye on the January inventory and sales to see if this index is really going to come up. And it has. It's gone up dramatically. And if you look here, this is probably the, the biggest driver is because our inventory is way down here. It's around 15,000. We got up to 20,000 back when sales dropped to about 2,100 every seven days. And that's when our prices came flying down. Well, now our sales are climbing along at a clip of about 2,000, let's see, 3,217. So the yellow line represents the number of contracts the past seven days. The blue line is new listings. And yet, excuse me, while new listings are climbing, sales seem to be, to be following right along. And we can see here, looking at the sales per month it's not huge sales are still pretty slow but sales are climbing so you've got sales climbing you've got inventory going down and that's what's driving the Cromford Min market index increasing and it's having an effect on pricing and you can see here that pending listings the number of listings that you know are now under contract um, has has increased so right here it's actually gone up at a Oh, pretty good clip. It's nowhere near where it was the past three years up in here. But it's not going down. It's going up. Now, if we take a look at average list price, this one gets interesting, folks. Average list price down here was matching 2021 levels. Now, it's starting to move up. So, sellers are getting a little more confident in their pricing a little higher, not much, on the first of the year in the hopes that they can get their asking price. And back here, we were looking and saying, it's time to price at 2021 levels if you expect to sell your home. But that's 2021 fourth quarter numbers. That's the important thing to look at. It's back here, not here. So you don't need to be at 2020 numbers from... January of last year, so 2021. So we're seeing sales start to increase. And again, not dramatically, but there's not enough. Here's your average list price per square foot, and you can see that it's also increasing. And that's really interesting, I think, because um, we were certainly not expecting that for January. Go back here, and here's your average sales price. And it took a slight dip Let's see if I can blow this up a little bit for you. It took a slight dip up right here again in January. So what this is all telling you is that January has been a kind of a turnaround month uh, where the listings were not flooded into the market like many expected. I expected way more than what we're seeing right now. I didn't think that we'd get down to down to 15,000 yet again, but that's where we are. And uh, 
people, rates really haven't changed that much. They're down to about 6.2. They were about 6.5. Uh, but there are people out there that are in a position to buy and they've been waiting and they've been waiting for home prices to come down and they're getting back in, not by the bus load. But it's a very easy market. When you're hearing that some homes are getting multiple offers, they aren't getting multiple offers as a rule where the prices are coming in above their asking price. They're getting multiple offers somewhere around the asking price, either a little bit below or right at it. So multiple offers on some selected homes are starting to show up, but not enough to say, oh no, here we go again. So what we don't know going forward, well, first let me back up and say, here's what we do know. There aren't any numbers that we're seeing right now that say that February is going to be slow and that uh, prices are going to continue to decline. Because right now where they're at, prices are going to, they're staying flat, they're starting to go up a little bit. March is a very busy time for us. So what can derail this? Well, Obviously, a huge spike in interest rates, and uh, we haven't seen that. Uh, the bond market is certainly not indicating that there's going to be a huge spike in interest rates, but we've been surprised before, and if we get one, then that will obviously slow down the sales numbers and put pricing pressure on existing inventory. But that has to happen before we see that. Right now, if you're thinking of selling, um, I heard somebody last night at a restaurant and he goes, boy, what a bad time to sell the house. And I just wanted to jump in and go, actually, it's not. <laughs> you price your home correctly, you will sell it. So if you're thinking about it, um, it this isn't a bad bad time at all. Uh, the impact of the Super Bowl, I don't think the impact of the Super Bowl is going to have any effect on our current inventory numbers or our sales numbers. Yes, it's a huge infusion of cash. To the valley here, uh, almost I think a billion dollars in tax revenue. The Airbnb people will be very cash flush after the Super Bowl. In fact, they will probably any Airbnb rent that they get from now till the end of the year after the Super Bowl will be icing on the cake. In other words, they will be have broken even for the year's expenses just from what they can get for Super Bowl week. So good year to own Airbnbs. Are they going to dump them after that? I don't know, hard to tell. It really ends up on what everybody's individual decisions are. I know in a survey, 37% of you that have short-term rentals said, yeah, you're probably going to sell. But after the Super Bowl, they're going to hang on for spring training, waste management open, which happens the same week as the Super Bowl. So a lot of reasons to hang on to those right now. Are there any other reasons why we would expect a spike in inventory? I can't think of one. Um, are there going to be some job losses? We're seeing some in the tech sector, but it's being made up by other jobs coming into the valley. So I'm not seeing a huge spike in unemployment that's going to start affecting people needing to sell their homes. Will we? Who knows? But right now, starting in January, it's, a, it's looking very positive for both buyers and sellers. Buyers, you have time to make a decision. You get to look at more houses than you ever could last year. Sellers... You will have a buyer if you're priced right. They are out knocking on doors and taking a look and seeing what's available. And uh, you're probably going to be asked to contribute towards seller closing costs or a rate buy down. So price it accordingly. And that's one of the reasons why sales are picking up a little bit because they can get more concessions from you now. And that helps with the payments. So it's an interesting market to watch. Uh, I didn't think we would see it uh, sales increase like we have in January. But uh, what we see is what we see. So I'm going to keep you posted here. Do me a favor and smash that like button. Have a great day.